it's time to build a new PC. And in this episode, we're going to be helping my partner build a new PC out of these brand new parts. So we're using one of the latest Ryzen chips, one of the latest gigabyte boards, a nice fast drive and some nice fast memory. So here we have all the new shiny pieces that we're going to be using. We're going to be using this Gigabyte X670 Gaming X AX motherboard. We're going to be using a Ryzen 5, which is an AM5. Some Kingston Fury RAM and a Samsung 980 Pro SSD. So this Gigabyte X670 Gaming AX board looks an absolute beast. We've got an NVMe drive, a one terabyte that's going to be going in there. And we've got this beautiful Ryzen 5 7600X, which is the AM5. And some nice Kingston Fury uh, RAM to go in there. All RGB, so this thing is going to light up like a Christmas tree when we're finished. So let's do some unboxing. Let's have a look at this new motherboard. And taking out of the box, you can feel that this motherboard is quite heavy due to all the heat sinks on the VRMs. Let's have a look what bits we've got in there. We've got the Wi-Fi antenna that comes with it. A couple of SATA cables and an extra standoff and screw for an extra M.2 drive. So let's carefully take the motherboard out of its packaging. There's nothing like the feel of a new motherboard to play with. So whilst we work on this motherboard, we're going to be keeping it on this anti-static bag and we're going to be fitting the parts that we can onto the motherboard just so it makes it easier for when we put the motherboard into the case. So there's our gigabyte board. Looks very, very nice. Lots of metal on there. Lots of heat spreaders for the NVMe drives and the M.2 drives. A nice heat spreader for the chipset and tons and tons of things we can plug in. So first off we're going to fit the SSD. So we have a Samsung 980 Pro, one terabyte, PCI 4 NVMe drive. And this thing should be blisteringly fast and one terabyte should be plenty of storage so the M NVMe drive is going to live underneath this heat spreader so we'll carefully undo it with its screw now there's two parts in there that you can clip onto one for a larger drive but we're using a 2280 sized drive and quite conveniently they've made little clips so we don't have to screw into the end so all it takes is we offer it up at a slight angle and then we push it into place it should make a nice should make a nice click when it goes in like that and then we'll just push it down into place. And then clip the retention part down and that's it in place. Take off the protective film on the heat transfer material. And then we can screw this back into place. I 
And whilst we're here, we're going to have a look underneath this shield as well. Because I believe there's some more M.2 drive places. And sure enough, under there, the space is for three more M.2 SSDs. So you could load this system up with quite a lot of onboard storage. Very nice. So the cooler we're going to be using is this Be Quiet Pure Loop 2 FX with 240 millimeter um, radiator. Now she chose this size because of the case that she'll be using, which will be shown very soon. But that's also a Be Quiet case as well. So let's have a look what we get in the box for this. So we have the RGB controller and the fan controller. The case has got a nice place for that to live. Now in here, I presume we've got all the mounting materials for the different chips this supports. And yes, we have. We've got two more RGB fans. So they need to be attached to the radiator when the time comes. Got some top-up liquid. The manual does say after a couple of years, top up the radiator. Some more screws and the pump assembly. With its protective film on it. So we're not going to be using that just yet. We're going to leave that in. We want to concentrate on getting the motherboard ready to go into the case. So we've got some thermal compound that they've sent with it. We've got the AMD hardware and we've got the Intel hardware. We don't need the Intel hardware. So that goes off to one side. We just need the AMD hardware. Now before we bought this, we did actually check that it was AM5 compatible, which it is. And it does state in the manual that it's AM5 compatible. Plus it goes along nicely with the theme of the um, the case being a Be Quiet case. So inside the, inside the mounting hardware, we have some standoffs, some screws, and the bracket to hold the coolers down. So basically we need to remove the original retaining clip or the original retaining hardware for the, um, if you used a fan or another make of cooling solution. But on this one it requires us to remove the ones that come with the board. And luckily we don't have to change the back plate. All we need to do is just change these top pieces of hardware. So we'll do it one side at a time so the back plate doesn't come off. So we take it away, put it to one side, put it in the motherboard box just in case we ever need to revert back or sell it or for whatever reason. So there's our two screw fixtures that we need. So we need to install these standoffs and then our new retention system for the pump it literally just drops in and we use the longer screws and we screw those into place making sure the nice and tight but not overly tight that's to crush the spacers but firm enough to retain it in place and we do exactly the same with the other side remove the screws take away the old retaining hardware 
put the spacers in place. And then fit our new retaining hardware. There's nothing more satisfying than building a new PC and having to fit all these little parts yourself. And whilst we fit that, over 80% of the people that watch my videos are not subscribed to this channel. So please go on, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell to tell you when I upload a new video. It helps me, it helps the channel. Thank you. So here's the star of the show. The brand spanking new Ryzen 5 AM5 CPU. I mean, we could have gone with the AM4, but that's at the end of its life now. There'll be no more AM4s. So we went for the AM5, not the high-end one, but this one should provide plenty of CPU power. So let's have a look at this CPU. And as you can see, it's a change from the original Ryzen chips that uses a, used a pin grid array. We're actually using an LGA landing grid array so we must take extra care whilst putting this into the machine as not to bend any of the pins on the motherboard because that would be catastrophic. So let's have a look at this LGA. So carefully lift the latch, lift the lid, and there's our LGA underneath. So, there is numerous ways you can do this. I think the proper way is to have put the chip in and then close it and then this pops off. I think not exposing the pins, or should we say exposing the pins for as short a time as possible. decreases the risk of any damage so we've got a marker we've got an arrow we've got an arrow so we want to be orientating the chip correctly so we'll line the chip up with a socket gently drop it into place and then we can close the CPU retention mechanism and that's our chip in place. So we're going to fit the water loop whilst it's in the case. So that's as far as we're going with the chip. Definitely a thing of beauty. So the next thing we're going to install is this Kingston Fury RAM. Nice DDR5. I think it's five six hundred. Not the top end of RAM, but should be plenty fast enough. And this is actually on the QVL list on the motherboard manufacturer's website. I did actually check up on the part numbers to make sure that this RAM was completely compatible. So for two for two sticks of RAM. We need to put it in A2 and B2, which was just shown there. So observing the correct orientation of the RAM, it just snaps into place. If we fit all these bits onto the motherboard now, it saves fiddling about actually in, inside the case. Plus we know we can put these parts on without any problem. So there's our retention bracket for our water pump, our memory installed, our NVMe drive installed. 
and this board definitely looks definitely looks like a beast with all its metal work and all its VRM cooling I'm definitely a fan of this chip. It looks amazing. Plus we've got a little bit of future upgradeability as well. Because in one of my previous videos, I upgraded from a 1700X to a 5900X. And that has given my AM4 system a whole new lease of life. So here's the case we're going to be using. It's a Be Quiet Pure Base 500FX in black. And I believe you can get this case in white as well. But my partner chose the black case for this build. And of course, it's got four RGB fans. It's got an RGB front. So again, it's going to light up like the Blackpool Illuminations when we fire this thing up. And with it all being be quiet, it should all sync together quite nicely. So it's already got the motherboard standoffs installed. There's one pin in the center for location. Now we did have a little bit of trouble getting the IO shield underneath the fan. We probably could have squeezed it in. But to be sure we just lifted the rear fan out of the way which was just four screws that give us a little bit more access now we could fit the pump and radiator at this time but the power for the motherboard lives at the top and i think if we install the uh, radiator we're just gonna have to take it back out again Plus, we're still waiting on the power supply, so that'll be in the next episode. But all, all it needed was just lining up at the back, getting the screws roughly, and then a nice push, and then that locator pin locates in the centre one, and locates it down into place. I think my partner was being a little bit too cautious here, Probably because she's just spent a whole heap of money on this system. But as it's in place, with its locator pin in place. So we just need to put all the screws in. So let's have a look what accessories we get. These are the accessories that come with the case. So, various screws. And standoffs and whatnot. Now, there was something really, really bizarre with this. Seven of the screws were of the smaller size, and the screw right at the very top in the middle was of a larger size. And you could tell this by when the screw was put in, it just dropped straight in and didn't grip onto anything. But using a magnetised screwdriver. We can tighten all these screws up. Not too much, but enough to hold the board into place. And this was the screw, this middle one. That had us fooled for a little bit because it just kept dropping down. But once we found the right size screw for it. It was not a problem. So there's our motherboard, CPU, RAM, SSD fitted into this case. Stay tuned for the next episode where we'll carry on this build.